What's up? Inside is Deuce Jack and Vaping Insider. Today, we're going to be going over a new one from Aspire. Talking about the Nautilus Prime. It takes those Nautilus coils. Let's check it out. Before we get into the video, click the link down below in the top comment in order to join our Facebook group. Let's check this thing out. Slide it open. Check out that little bit of sexiness, huh? Not bad looking at all. I'm digging it, man. I'll tell you what I like about it right off the jump. I like these edges, these like smooth edges. They kind of give it a nice feel in the hand, all right? You can see you get these little stickers. You peel them off right there, all right? Same thing on the bottom there. You get some more stickers, peel them off. You can tell this is an internal battery mod. Let's put it on deck for a second and let's go over the rest of the contents. Also included in the kit, you get a Nautilus Prime user manual, a warning for operation card, you get a type C charging cable, which is rather nice, and two coils are included in the kit. Now, first coil you get is this one. I'll open it up for you, nice and fresh. All right, now you can see this is a Nautilus coil. All right, it's a mesh coil. Now, take note, this has the blue O-ring, okay? This is the 0.7 ohm coil, good for 20 to 25 watts. You can see by looking inside, it is a mesh coil, all right? This is the one I've been running, been enjoying the hell out of this thing at around 24 watts. It is a nice, nice vape. The other one that comes in the packaging has a white O-ring, okay? And you can see you pop it out just like that. Now, this is the 1.8 ohm, good for 10 to 14 watts. This is the Nautilus BVC coil, okay? We've all seen this before. We've all vaped on it before. Pretty, pretty solid coil line, all right? I've vaped on this type of coil before. It's a little too mellow for me. I'm going to try out the mesh one first. Let's go over the mod. A little bit of loud branding there, right? Especially for Aspire. That's normally not their jam. A little too loud for me. It's not terrible. It's not Vupu drag terrible, but uh, it's a little too big for me, man. There's your Aspire branding. I would have rather have seen this branding look like that, but okay. Nice clear window. You can see your juice level. I'm digging that, all right? Here's where you get your airflow from. Here is your airflow adjustment right here, this little lever. Up and down buttons, type C charging port. The up and down buttons are kind of flush. I'm kind of digging that, not going to lie. All right. Here is your screen right here. There is your fire button. As I said in the beginning, I'm digging these cutouts, the way they kind of squared it off but didn't give it a rough feeling. Really, really nice job on that. On the bottom, you can see you got some venting there for your internal battery. It is a 2,000 milliamp hour battery. All right, if you want to turn it on, five clicks, goes right on just like that. There is your screen. Screen is extremely simple. Battery meter, resistance, voltage, wattage. All right, here is your up and down button right there. Goes up to a maximum wattage of 40 watts. It does round robin. It does scroll in 0.1 watt increments. When you hold the button, though, it does take off kind of fast. I like that. All right. So 40 watt device maximum. All right. There's your up and down button right there. Scrolls in 0.1 watt increments. OK. In order to show you the menu system, let me switch to the one I've been using since it's already got a coil installed. All right. If you hold the plus and fire button together, you can see it locks the mod. OK. That means it'll still fire, but you can't adjust the wattage up or down, okay? In order to get out of that mode, hold the plus and fire button down again, and you're unlocked. Now, the other thing you can do on this, if you want to lock the mod down completely, five clicks, okay? Now the mod is totally locked. It will not fire. You cannot make the wattage go up or down. Five more clicks, and it unlocks it. And that's it, folks. That's the whole menu system. While I got it here, let me show you the blue one that I've been rocking, kind of digging the blue one. Let's go back to the gray one and go over the pod. Now, on the top side here, you got two screws holding everything in place. This is a top-loading pod system, kind of sort of like smoke fetch-ish, right? 
It's got a little bit of roughness here, so you can grab it and pull it out. Okay, it is in there nice and tight. I do like that. I like the click that you get from it. Definitely nice and tight. On the bottom there, you can see two gold-plated contacts that make contact with your coil and allow you to fire the coil. Now, over here is where you get your airflow from, okay? Just want to point that out. That's where your airflow is coming in from. As far as the pod goes, nice size pod, nice and clear, all right? It does have a 510 style drip tip that's definitely in there pretty snug. All your other 510s will fit fine in there, no issues, okay? However, I do like this one. It is nice. It does have a nice contour to it. Definitely dig in that, all right? Now, over here, you can see this is your plug to fill it up with. Nice size fill port right there. Should have no issues. This pod does take 3.4 mLs, all right? So that's a nice juice capacity for a pod of this size, all right? Here is your little ring here, whatever you want to call it. This is what you seat your coil in before you plug it in there. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If you were running the mesh coil, you take your Nautilus coil here, give it a little reverse thread, screw it down, make it make sure it's nice and tight, okay, that it's making good contact. And then once you, I'm not really a big fan of priming these coils, to be honest with you. They're so small. What I like to do with these coils, these Nautilus coils, I'm not a fan of priming them. What I like to do is I like to pop them in there dry, right? Then pop open the tank, fill the tank, and let it sit for a good 5-10 minutes. I find I get better life out of these Nautilus coils by doing that. And then once you're done with that, you can pop this in a mod and you're ready to vape. Now another feature I want to show you on this, okay, and I'm going to show you on the one that I'm using, all right, is you can see the mod's at 40 watts right now, right? If I take the pod and I slide it in there, look at that. It automatically went down the 25 watts. It automatically reads the resistance of the coil and sets the wattage. And as a safety feature, it will not let you go past the maximum of 25 watts. Kind of cool, right? It'll do the same thing if I take the 1.8 ohm coil. It'll knock the wattage down from 25 to whatever the parameters are on the coil. Pretty cool feature. Definitely digging that. Let me give you one last look at them all put together. Of course, that's the blue. That's the gray. Really, really nice looking, simple pod system. Let's go over those cons and pros. We'll start off with cons. First con's going to be, and I'm a little surprised at Aspire, because they definitely had room on the side to put a fill port. Why did they make it so you have to remove the tank in order to fill it? I would have rather have seen it the other way around. I could fill it while the tank is still installed. It's a missed opportunity. It's a con. I'm not sure I like the location of either the airflow or the fire button because the fire button, depending on which way you use it, sometimes you actually block the airflow. So either change the location of the airflow or change the location of the fire button. But it's not as well thought out as it should have been. And the last con's gonna be that branding on there for Aspire. That's a little loud, Aspire. You're not Vupu. Don't be doing that anymore. It's a con. But that's it on the cons. Let's move on to the pros, because we got a lot to talk about. First pro is gonna be, I like the fact that the tank loads from the top. I like that. It clicks in there nice and secure. It's a definite pro. I also like the fact that I can easily see my juice level. I really don't have to hold it up to the light pro. Great coil system. That Nautilus coil system is timeless. You get really good flavor, and you can find those coils anywhere. Great job on that Aspire. It's got adjustable airflow. This thing's got Type-C charging, and it charges pretty fast. I love the anodized look on it, and the build quality is there as well. It's all pros, baby. It's lightweight. It's an easy carry. Very, very pocketable. Pro. It's got adjustable wattage, I like that. So far, I've been getting great battery life on this thing. I mean, I'm running the, the coil you saw me install in there at around 25 watts. It's a 2000 milliamp hour battery, so you're gonna get great battery life. And I gotta tell you, man, we already spoke about the flavor. 
but the clouds aren't bad. Here's the coil you saw me install, the mesh one, 25 watts. Check it out. That's not terrible considering the size of this coil. And the flavor is definitely there. I mean, really, what's wrong with that? Nothing. So that's it, insiders. Those are the cons and pros. Let's move on to our five-star rating system. First category is going to be the looks. I got to tell you, I like the squared-off angular look of it. I like the anodized finish. I think they did a really nice job as far as the build quality goes. I think it's sleek and kind of sexy looking. Nice job, Aspire. I'm going to give it a solid three and three quarter stars. As far as the coil performance goes, I already said it, takes Nautilus coils. They've been around forever. They're very flavorful. They're tried and true. You can get them everywhere. Probably one of the best coil systems for a pod type of system next to the PNP coils. They're not as big or as flavorful as the PNP coils, but as far as in the lower wattage spectrum, it's hard to beat these Nautilus coils. In the coil performance category, I'm gonna give it four and a half stars and it deserves it. As far as the airflow goes, it's adjustable. I wish it had a little bit of a wider range because of that, I'm only going to give it a point above average. We're going to call it three and a half stars. Now, when it comes to the value, I've been seeing this anywhere from $35 to $47. Make sure you shop around a little bit, all right? I got to tell you, man, for the vape quality that you get, for the build quality that you get, that's not a bad price point. I'm going to score it a point above average again and give it three and a half stars. We're going to take all these stars. We're going to add them up. We're going to come up with a total star count of 15 and a quarter. We're going to take those 15 and a quarter stars. We're going to divide them by four. We're going to come up with an average star count of 3.812, which puts this just shy of being automatically Deuces Jack approved. It lost some points in the airflow department. I think if the airflow had a little bit of a wider range to it, it would have scored better. The bottom line is, if you're looking for a real solid pod system that takes really good coils, you definitely want to check this one out. Let's get into some of the specs on the Aspire Nautilus Prime. It measures in at 89.5 by 45 by 23 millimeters. It holds 3.4 mLs of juice, and it has a 2,000 milliamp hour battery. Type-C charging at 2 amps is on deck. It has a 60-watt maximum output and a .69 OLED display. In the kit, you will get two coils, a .70 mesh coil, good for 20 to 25 watts, and a 1.8 ohm BVC coil, good for 9 to 13 watts. There is an RBA available as a separate purchase. It's available in gray, green, red, blue, black, and silver. Don't forget, insiders, head on over to our Facebook group, Vaping Insider Community. The feed flies, it's very active, very newbie-friendly, 13,000 members strong. Tons of knowledgeable vapers over there that are very friendly. I'd love to see you over there. I'm there basically 24-7. And that's it, insiders. That's all I got for you guys today. You keep living that vape life. We're out of here. Deuces.